Hello there. Welcome to Under the Brush. Alright, good evening and welcome to the premiere episode of Under the Brush, brought to you by Spectre Studios. I'm your host, Spectre Ames, and a quick history of, of my painting um, techniques. I've been painting for about 10, 10 or 12 years now, and those of you who uh, watch the Bat Reps know that I'm much better at painting than I am at playing. Um, over the years, I've developed a number of techniques based upon a variety of models put out by different companies. Games Workshop, obviously, is a big one. They're uh, the, the big, big game company in the, in the industry. Uh, however, I've also put out, uh, been also been painting Privateer Press for a while, and I've also, for a while, when it was available, Rackham Confrontation, probably one of the best lines of models individually produced ever. Um, however, business practices are, are different from the techniques and sculpting practices, and uh, Rackham is no longer with us, which is a sad thing. But I've been painting for about 12 years, as I mentioned, and with a variety of different types of models that I've painted, I've had to develop a great deal of techniques. The v variety of model lines that I've built, uh, built and painted in the past have led me to develop a variety of techniques that we're going to be exploring in coming episodes of Under the Brush. And so we'll be looking at different things like how do we do vehicles, how do we do infantry, how do we do um, large models like uh, uh, jet bikes or um, vehicles on cavalry, that type of technique, because those are all vastly different in, in surface areas that we're looking at. We've got clothes, we've got like cloth on like infantry models is very, very, is, is very different from how you want to paint a vehicle. The armor plates on a vehicle are very flat, very large, smooth surfaces, and so the techniques that you're going to use are going to be vastly different. And of course, um, as an Eldar player, uh, one of the big things I had to develop technique for was painting gems, and that's going to be one of the big things because the gems on, an El uh, on the Eldar models can do a beautiful, look beautiful, and, and really make a model go from being like a kind of a good tabletop quality to really top tier competition style painting. And we'll explore all of those varieties in future episodes. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the kind of a typical setup that I've got for my table here in Under the Brush episodes. Uh, what we've got are a variety of uh, painting um, projects that are going on. Um, up front on the right, I've got my paintbrush tray and that's also kind of the immediate work area. I've got my towel, my brushes, kind of like do all the painting over there so I don't like dirty up the table I'm actually using. Um, now, next to that, we've got the Falcon that's partially assembled and has been painted and is actually reaching the final stages of painting and we'll uh, be uh, wrapping that one up soon in the next day or two. Uh, I've got my uh, off to the side from there, nice and handy within reach right immediately there is uh, painting palette and some paints that I've been using on the Falcon. Uh, behind that, up the back corner, is my very portable tray and case that I use for painting my models. This is where I carry all my paints in. Uh, a few other things will get tossed in there. So that's where the um, paintings that I, I'm actually working on, that's where the paints go and carry stuff around easily and nice and portable. Carrying on further behind the uh, immediate work area, we've got uh, a couple of uh, long-term projects that are coming up and uh, when I get distracted and decide that I, I'm done painting with the current one that I'm working on, I have other projects that are available immediately at reach so I can go ahead, spend some time working on those projects as well. And so what we'll see is be able to really uh, focus and keep painting everything going and uh, not really uh, breaking and, and stopping and taking uh, long-term breaks or anything like that. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, painting projects that we've got going on. And I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and zoom in on some of them. Okay, so one of the wonderful things about a Eldar Falcon is that the cockpit is exposed so you can actually see the pilot and the gunner in them. And one of the things you really, really wanna do, unless you wanna just kinda like paint over the uh, cockpit uh, canopy in a solid color and make an opaque color, then you really really have to paint the cockpit. The pilot, the gunner, give it a nice level of detail. And 
Okay, one of the next things I wanted to look at was the Harlequins that I've been, I've been working on. We've got a couple of squads here. Now, one of the things we notice, and we'll be talking some more about the techniques, is the Har Eldar Harlequins are very much known for using a diamond pattern. And here we can see some of the stages in that painting process. Uh, we can see um, on the collar, collar there, the diamond pattern laid out. Uh, we can see up on the arm, we can see the uh, diamond pattern painted in. On the leg, we can see kind of the uh, cross pattern beginnings, and that's where the uh, painting started. Over here, over here, we can, here on this troop leader, we can actually see the second stage of painting with them. We can see where I've laid out on the green areas on the leg, especially the right thigh there. We can see the pencil lines that I've used to mark out and the next step is going to be laying in the orange paint covering over those lines and then fill in the diamonds so that we end up with that wonderful diamond check pattern. Okay. And there we have once again that view, that view of the diamond check pattern on the uh, left arm there with the Harlequin's kiss. So we can see a little bit more cleaning up, clean up work on it to go, but it's pretty well laid out right there. Okay, now, as any good painter need, knows, one of the things you should always have handy is inspiration. And these are past model models that I've painted, and really, really, I feel these are some of the best models I, I've painted. Really enjoyed a lot of the painting on them, and really liked the sculpts as a paint, as a painting palette something to actually receive the paint okay we have one of the best models that i've i've ever really encountered and that is the bard of allahan from rackham's confrontation okay so as you can see there's a variety of surfaces here we've got some cloth we've got some armor we got some metallics and it really gives us a nice nice variety of materials great composition nice structure to the model good triangular composition nice and wide at the base long and pointy up at the top. So it really gives us a great opportunity to really express ourselves with the paint and really a very characterful model, all in all. Okay, again, staying within the Rackham Confrontation line is one of my other favorite models of all time. The Waxing Moon Warg from the Wolfen line. And this is just a very, very fun model to paint. It's the, the war leaping over the rock as it's charging forward into its enemies. And it's just a really fun model, just beautifully sculpted. Uh, great level of detail. There's veins showing up on the arms, all the musculature. And yet it still also has some armor surfaces and some other uh, details that allow you to really, really uh, have fun with the model and perhaps one of my favorite details. And one of my favorite details, it, the warg brings lunch with it. It's got a, a little deer uh, tied up to its belt. Okay, now, as I said, this is kind of typical for a painting area that I've got. Uh, we have the various um, painting projects right up the front that I'm working on. Um, however, we also have, as I mentioned, the long-term projects. We've got a couple of vipers still on the sprues in the background there. We'll be uh, looking at how those come together. And in the back, the far back, we've got a couple of blisters. Okay, now with less glare, the other uh, project that I've got in the, uh, on the, in the pipeline, uh, Infinity Models. We're going to be uh, getting into those. These are a couple that... Spectre Sinense has just given me and we're gonna go ahead and see about getting these all painted up and We might go ahead and actually see about taking these up to a high-level competition kind of painting and really uh, step it up with these So as Spectre Studios is resident painter I'm here to help you become a better painter and so we have Army introductions on our website so you can go ahead and take a look at those army introductions say hey how did he get that technique? How did he get that effect on that model there? How did that happen? What did he do? How did he? What, 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 did, what brush strokes did he use? That kind of stuff. Go ahead, give us some comments, give us some feedback, asking these kinds of questions, telling us what you like, what you don't like, 
even though I may not necessarily want to hear it, it's still good to hear what you don't like. That way I get feedback, I can improve my own techniques and in the process help you improve your techniques. And so go ahead, subscribe to our Spectre Studios and remember, a painted model is a happy model.